someday. In the not so distant future, it happens. The moment you realize you're ready for anything. Get a degree in emergency management from Jacksonville State University and be ready for where you're going. This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, February the 9th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. And what can I say? We're headed for another winter weather mess across the southeastern United States. The surface map this morning shows a large high-pressure area extending from New England down along the mid-Atlantic states and across the southern Appalachians into the southeastern U.S., and that's going to give us a relatively nice day today. We're still dealing with a Long wave trough position over the eastern half of the country that's keeping things on the cool side. Yes, we had a very nice day yesterday, but still a little cooler than we typically expect. Looks like disturbances running through that flow will create some winter weather problems for the southeastern U.S. You can see that the temperature uh, up in north central U.S. is pretty chilly with some uh, below zero values all the way down through much of the Dakotas. And... Uh, over into the western Great Lakes region, but across the southern tier of the United States along the Gulf Coast, temperatures actually pretty nice. I like that 70 down at Key West. No 70s in central Alabama, but we are generally in the mid and upper 30s across the area, a little bit cooler in the northeast sections, as you might expect, and we will see some sun today, but clouds increase tonight. The big story, of course, is the developing winter weather event which is responsible for winter storm watches all the way from near the Fort Smith and Little Rock areas all the way across Memphis, Tupelo, and parts of north central and north Alabama over into northern Georgia. And then uh, down in uh, Texas, that uh, gray area is actually a dense fog advisory. Precipitation-wise, we're looking at a liquid water equivalent over the next uh, five days of uh, on the order of one to two inches. The question is going to be just exactly how efficient the atmosphere will be in translating that into winter precipitation. How much will we get? Yeah, that's kind of hard to say right now. The also the big question is where will the icing be? The cold air, however, and the cold weather keeping organized severe thunderstorms at bay, and that's really good. All right, let's get to modeling. Here's the 06 GFS model run. Here's the 12-hour forecast for today, and you see the high pressure. Uh, over the southeastern U.S. at the surface, and that uh, is keeping us in good weather for today. But this will be the last relatively good weather day for several days and probably won't see much of the sun either. Tomorrow by uh, noontime, we see the overall long wave trough position over the eastern half of the country, and uh, that certainly keeping the eastern half of the country pretty chilly. You see the 540 line, which is just a marker that we use along the Alabama Tennessee line Monday at midday and uh, precipitation developing off to our west and southwest as we begin to develop a little uh, wave at the surface along that front. We see in the upper atmosphere on Tuesday that we've got these little disturbances, one over northern New Mexico, one over Iowa that are moving through the flow. They're moving fairly quickly. It's a very fast moving flow. It was with wind, as you see, on the order of uh, anywhere from 50 to 70 knots. And uh, that should spread precipitation into the area Monday night, uh, probably as early as or could be as early as 3 to 5 p.m., 6 p.m. in the northwest sections uh, and then uh, uh, coming uh, further down. Now, the 540 line doesn't get into Alabama, so okay, we're not going to be forecasting snow. No, you have to look down lower, and the 850 zero-degree isotherm comes down into the Tennessee River Valley. So we're going to remain on the edge. Looking at an intermediate time, which is 12Z, that's Tuesday morning, we see that the uh, zero-degree isotherm at 850 comes a little bit further to the south uh, as well. So we're going to have to be watching that development. The trough that uh, the short wave troughs that we noted are coming through the flow on Tuesday. And once again, that's going to uh, create a band of snow. The most likely location for the band of heaviest snow is going to be from about Memphis over towards Huntsville, approximately. Uh, these bands will set up. Now, still some uncertainty. 
This is a look at the European model, the European a little bit more aggressive uh, on uh, the possibility uh, of uh, the amount of liquid coming in with uh, on the order of 1.6 inches uh, over the period of time there. But even the European is suggesting at Birmingham no snow. Now, when we look at the uh, GFS, and the GFS also says no snow, and it's a little less um, on the rain initially, but then it catches up uh, that we see on Tuesday morning, we see on the order of uh, another uh, approximately one inch or so of precipitation. Now, here's part of the problem. This is the sounding, the model sounding from the NAM. Now, that sounding, if you'll notice from the ground, 1,000 millibars up to just below 700 millibars, which is roughly about 10,000 feet, you'll notice it's above freezing. If that is indeed true on Tuesday morning, then Birmingham has nothing to worry about. It's just rain. However, you look at the GFS, and the GFS paints a different story. The GFS is suggesting the colder air is going to be deeper and get further south. So what's the path of greatest uh, safety? Well, the path of greatest safety is to forecast something along this line. And keep in mind, as James has noted, those black lines are not drawn in stone. They're not absolutes. It's still fluid. But I think we've got a pretty good handle on it, and it looks like two to four inches of snow across the area of Huntsville, Decatur, Florence, Muscle Shoals, down towards Russellville, Hamilton, um, the uh, parts of Winston and Coleman County, and over towards uh, Albertville, Gunnersville, Fort Payne. Then, in a band roughly from uh, southeast of Columbus, Mississippi, across the Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Jasper area, Trussville, uh, Pelham, uh, Talladega, Gadsden, uh, Anniston areas, we're looking at one to three inches of snow with the potential also of up to one quarter of an inch of ice accumulation. And therein lies part of the problem. That means we could be experiencing power outages. So the bottom line is let's get as prepared as we can. If you prepare and nothing happens, what's the big deal? There is none but you're safe. If it does materialize, then we could be paralyzed for a day or two. Power could be out. This is not just a transportation issue. This could be power outage issues because the ice could bring down power lines as well as trees. All right, now we get past this event. The weather continues to be somewhat uh, inclement on Wednesday with a, a sharpening trough coming by. So we do expect precipitation to probably be ending Wednesday, but we could have precipitation most likely in the form of rain, but it could change over to snow once again. By Thursday, that trough is by, and we see a second trough coming into the western Great Lakes, but it doesn't have the amplitude way down this way, so it's going to bring another front our direction, but it's not going to necessarily bring the coldest air down our, uh, this way. As you see on Friday, the main trough going across uh, New York and Pennsylvania. By Saturday, the flow is dampened just a little bit, but we do see another fairly significant trough coming into northwestern Iowa, and that one will move fairly quickly through the flow, reaching the mid-Atlantic states on Sunday. So that could bring us some precipitation as we head into uh, late Saturday and Sunday based on the current forecast thinking. Now, looking out briefly into voodoo country, uh, we did see that uh, the GFS yesterday suggested that we're going to have a warming trend around the 18th, 19th of February. That still seems to be the trend. And then when we get out to the end of the period, around the 24th, the GFS still hinting at the return of the long wave trough position. And so it would be another cool down and perhaps the risk of either severe weather and or some more winter weather. We'll get that later. That's way out in speculation. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Weather Extreme video. James Spann, I hope, will be back if he doesn't grab a flight for warmer places like Jamaica or Bermuda or some other tropical paradise. In the meantime, I hope that you have a wonderful day and please, please, please get ready for what we might possibly see in central Alabama Monday night and Tuesday. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day. Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.